Here we go, guys. So I'm so honored to be here today um, interviewing um, the, one of the greatest MMA fighters of all times, George St. Pierre, a Gracie Barra Black Belt and the professor uh, Bruno Fernandes. And um, George St. Pierre, thank you so much for your time, bro. It's been a long time. I don't see you. And uh, how single are there, man? Uh, it's been so long. I think it's going very well. I cannot complain. I, I love my life and I'm very happy, you know. I, likewise, uh, you know, I'm, I hope everything goes well for you. I'm, we haven't talked for a long time. It's good to see you, uh, Brolio. So, George, I, I followed you, you know, and I had the opportunity to train with you in several times. And uh, one thing that struck me the most was on how you trained every single different aspect of MMA on its own world like for example when you train wrestling you you used to go train with a wrestling wrestlers on the wrestling mats with the shoes and all that when you should train like your thai boxing section you used to train with the best thai boxers um of the on the own field training in thailand you know and um this was very interesting to see and i would like to know what did it came this idea came about well if if you look at a, a similar sport for example, I, I consider mixed martial art like uh, in, in track and field decathlon. You know, decathlon is, is many, the athlete has to master many different disciplines. They're not specialized in, in one particular area. Maybe they will be better at, or more competent at, at certain area than others, but that's the same idea. Uh, I always thought that would have been a better idea to, to be able to train with the best. For example, in Jiu Jitsu, I was able to train with you. Roger Gracie at the time too. You guys were the, you're you're the best in jiu-jitsu. So I was very fortunate to to have the chance to go with guys like you to uh, improve my skills. And uh, same thing boxing. I had the chance to train with different world world champion. Uh, you know, uh, I had a ch in UK the 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 galley James the galley. I had a chance to train with him a little bit. Uh, uh, Adonis Stevenson, a bunch of guys, and and the same thing. You know, in, in jiu-jitsu. Uh, uh, track and field and everything. So the key to improve, I guess, it's to get out of your comfort zone and, you know, you, you got to do it. You know, sometimes it's not, it, it's the most humbling experience because you think you're good. And when you go to train in a particular field, a very a, a particular field, you see that you have a lot, still a lot to learn. And it, for me, it was a, a big wake up call. And, and I never really care how I look in training. I care how I look in the fight. So that's what that's what matter for me. Well, you look pretty good in all of your fights, man. I can tell you that. Well, it's uh, it's it, it's something to to make a, an analogy. A lot of people ask me the question. You know, when uh, uh, Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather in boxing, I, I I said that I said this. I said Conor last way longer against Floyd in boxing than than Floyd would last in MMA against Conor. The thing is, Connor can box. He, he get out of his comfort zone. He's able. He, he's he's not as good as Floyd, but he's he's competent in boxing. He's a very good boxer. But Floyd is the best in the world. So in boxing, for sure, he's gonna lose. But the other way around is not true. Floyd never never trained with kicks or or takedown or or wrestling, as far as I know. So if you if Floyd would have fought in MMA, it would be a complete destruction. It would not even be a fight. So it's a little bit the same thing in training. I, I, I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone and train in a specific area to in, in, in order to improve my skills. And then when I put it all together, I have more weapon. Yeah, man, uh, I believe that Connor did a pretty good job on, on his feet and it would be completely different if he was in MMA, for sure. George, we are from the same generation, you know, like in similar ages. And um, uh, I remember that... Um, watching blood sport you know the movie from uh, with jean claude van damme and i was always very fascinated uh of the idea of the the, the humble aspects of the martial arts and uh, you know like seeing the the nice person to be able to overcome or, or to get away of the bully with a class and um watching blood sport i remember being very excited every time i watched i watched so many times and uh back in the day and that, that was one of my biggest biggest influence to the martial arts. Were you influenced by blood sport as well? Oh yeah, blood sport is one of the reasons why I I, I choose 
inspired me to start training uh, karate and all that. Uh, unfortunately, I made the mistake of watching Bloodsport pretty recently, and it did not grow up very well. <laughs> it's a, it, it used to add an incredible memory of that movie, but when you watch it, like in recent time, like now, it's the, the, the thing is I want to say is back in the day, it used to be like one of the top, top movie for martial art fans. And it's uh, it, it's a movie of not only you, Brolio, and I think an entire generation got inspired by it. But now if you watch it uh, right now, it, things doesn't go as well uh, for that. For that. <laughs> Especially those dances that uh, Van Damme was throwing on the dance floor. Huh? Was, I didn't want to watch that again. <laughs> exactly. You have plenty of black belts in martial arts in karate, Shodokan, Koikushin, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know. And uh, how did you start martial arts? I, uh, I start tr doing Kyokushin Karate. My uh, father is a black belt in Kyokushin Karate. Then I compete a lot in Kyokushin Karate. But then when I first saw uh, Rice Gracie winning the, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, I wanted to learn Jiu Jitsu because I knew how to fight standing up. But uh, at the time, I had no idea. Watching movies, you, I, w I, was, I had the impression that, a, that a, a real fight was only standing up. I had no idea that you, you could use grappling and, and, and uh, submission all to, to, to beat a, a, an opponent. And when I saw Rice Gracie, I, I did at first I did not I did not understand what 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 he was doing. But when I start watching closely and I understood, I I, I was like, wow, I gotta learn that. It's uh, re revolutionary this thing. So that's how I learned jujitsu at first. I, I was sixteen years old. Yeah, it's so interesting because uh, it's very similar thing came to me. You know, when I when I used to watch. Royce Gracie, you know, and, and be able to using uh, the gentle art to be able to go through and, and get away with the strikers, be able to submit them, you know, bringing our Brazilian flag to the top. We are very patriotic back in Brazil. And, uh, you know, it was such a moment that seeing a Brazilian doing so well, bringing our flag to the top, it was uh, something that got me really, really curious. And um, I, that was a very big motivation for me too. George, another thing that strikes me as well, like, you know, how humble and, and how polite and how respectful you are as, as a, a fighter, as a, a, a teacher, and also as a, a student, you know, I was talking to Bruno Fernandes, Professor Bruno Fernandes for a while, and um, he mentioned the one thing that uh, called his attention as well, is that it doesn't matter who was in the class if there was a white belt or a blue belt and he had to teach all the uh, basics and uh, you were there on the class and um, he, he mentioned that even purple belts or blue belts stopped training uh, after a few drills but you were drilling all the time until the practice is over you know this is pretty cool way of approaching martial arts i believe that the basic stuff that what works the best in a fight and, and it's like when you're building a house you need to have good foundation if you don't have good foundation your house will crumble at the end when you when it's on top and i think jiu-jitsu and not only jiu-jitsu all martial arts are the same if you don't have a good foundation uh it will make your, your game uh, weaker at, at the end and I always thought that it would be a good, it's always a good, it's never too much to review foundation move. Even if it's beginners, sometimes you, there is detail that you, that you forgot that you need to catch. You can catch it back later. You're like, oh, I haven't seen it. Like, I remember Bro, uh, Brolio, you show me something with a Kimura. A long time ago, you told me like uh, to make my Kimura stronger, to not grab with my thumb around to grab it like this. And I will remember that for the rest of my life. And, and I've learned the Kimura many years before that you show me that, that trick. But just that little detail that you gave me made an entire different, it changed my game. So 
little things like that sometimes can change your entire game. Even if it doesn't have to be complicated and very advanced, sometimes it can reset your game and improve it in a very dramatic way. So it's always good to review foundation moves. So that's why I, I never say no. I, I'm always down for whatever the, the, the sensei is, is explaining. Yeah, a lot of people miss this point, you know, because every self-defense has all the concepts that leads to any, uh, like, advanced techniques, you know? Like, and uh, every uh, self-defense has important concept that you can apply in any, any fight scenarios. So training with you and, and, and on your fights, one thing that's really striking is how you timed everything. And I, I remember after all the, the practice that we did, you used to spend a lot of time uh, extra, you know, after the, the practice or the sparring on in drilling and, and working on the timing, you know, like on the shooting, on the double leg, on the guy move, and just to get the timing, you know, and you really advised me and, and, and Roger on that. And um, I started doing this very often after classes. And, um, you know, that's one thing that really uh, was shown on your fights, how amazing timed what your techniques and your, and your instincts yeah a lot of uh, a lot of guys sometimes even now i have a hard time i'm at sometimes i'm training at tristar and i try to explain the younger generation the the importance the importance of drilling so it's it's very important drilling i believe the fight when you're you're in the middle of a fight it's like a, it's like a cruise control you don't yeah, it's very clear to me how much benefit that got me to my single legs and to my double legs. You know, like uh, we're doing the, uh, those flow drills are so simple, but at the same time, so effective. Time to think. You, uh, you only react. Uh, and the, the way you want to make your reaction better is by drilling. It's like your brain is a computer. So you want to program your computer of reacting to, to certain situations the the fight. It's not during the fight. I, I heard a lot of time people say, oh, when, when, the, when I'm going to be fighting, I'm going to step up my game. There is no step up. If you haven't done your homework in the, in the, in the, in the gym, you will not step up your game. You won't be able to step up your game, you know? The thing that can happen, you can step down your game with the stress and the anxiety. This is possible, but step up, there is no step up. So you could be just as good as you could be. And the way to, to make your reaction better, it's by drilling, repeating, 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 repeating. Because when you're in the middle of a fight, you don't, you have no time to think. You just have to trust your, your instinct and go with the flow. If you think too much, the time you take to think, it's too, it's too long. You will lose the, the opportunity. Okay, so talking about your fights, right? So which one you consider it was your best performance? It's hard to say. I, I like all my rematches. My rematch, I'm, I'm very happy about all my rematch, which, whether if it's Matt Hughes, Matt Serra, or BJ Penn. I'm always very good in rematch because I'm someone that once I can, when I get, when I can study someone, when I have an idea of what my opponent looks like, I'm, I'm just very good in rematches. I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the guys that is specialized in rematch. The more data I can download on my opponent, I can make myself a kryptonite. I can, I, can be, I can become his nemesis and find a way to beat him. So you, because when you watch tapes of a fighter before a fight, the guy is never as good as you think he is. He's never as bad as you think he is. He's different all the time. You, you're never right away on the dot, you know? Because you don't know exactly how your style will match up with his style. However, when you fight him once in a small uh, time zone, you know, for sure, if you wait 10 years, it will change. But if you fight him, for example, one year and you fight him the next year or a year and a half, you will not have a chance, the chance to change that much. So it will be... Not, not not the same guy that you fought before, but because you're never the same guy. A fighter is never the same after a fight, but it will be similar. So you will be able, if you're good at adjusting and and, and tactical planning, you will you will you will you will improve your performance. And that's one of the things that I'm very good at. So all my rematch, 
were very good. My performance always been good in rematches. Yes, a lot of people can look so uh, dangerous or so tough, you know, when you're watching, and and then some others can look really bad, you know. But we don't really never find out really until you actually feeling what happens, right? And uh, you know, and by looking, it can be really deceiving. I remember my first lesson about that was when I, I was on this tournament, and this guy was like. Man, smashing everyone. I think it was a uh, in the purple belt at the time, and then I remember the guys looking so good, man. It looked like a black belt fighting, you know. And I saw, man, the things are about to get real now. And then even the way that he warmed up, like, oh, man, this guy know what he's doing. And, uh, you know, all the geese full of patches. And then I was like, oh, okay, this is intimidating, you know. And then I, I went to restart the match. As soon as I make my first my, my first grips, and I kind of. Oh, hold on a second, you know, my training partner Luciano gave me a lot more hard work than this, you know, and then I said, oh, you know what, I can do it, you know, that was, that was pretty cool. All right, so you're talking about the best performance, so on that lead, what was your toughest fight? The toughest fight that I had, it might surprise people, but it's, he's not the best guy that I've fought, skill-wise. But the toughest fight that I had, it was a fight before, I, it's a fight that I had before the UFC. It was in Canada. It was in UCC. It, it was my fourth fight. And it was against a guy named Thomas Denny. And I took that fight and I was, I was sick the morning of the fight. I had big headache, I had fever. But at that time, I needed the money, so I had no choice. I, I, I wanted to take the fight because everybody, my parent, my friend bought the ticket, so I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, I, I just thought of myself. I took a, a cold shower before, and I said, let's go. I beat Thomas Denny in the second round. But I remember after the first round, I was so tired and so weak, I wanted to give up. And I, I told my crazy corner man, who was, uh, his name was uh, Stefan Padvain and Christophe Midou. I asked them, I said, guys, I said, if I, I can't go back in there, I'm, I'm done. And they were like, no, you're going to go back. You have no choice. And I told them, I said, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to throw a head kick. And if the head kick miss, I cannot breathe. I'm so tired. Just throw the towel. I'm done. And they look at me. They say, George, we don't have any towel. You're going to die in the ring. And then I hear the I hear the ring. Eh, now it was my time to go. And I remember I got so mad at them. I'm like, bunch of assholes. They didn't even they, they they want me to die in the ring. So I went there and then I beat the guy. But at the end of the fight, bro, yo, I thought I, I was going to fall unconscious. I was very, very, very tired. Very, very um, tired. Like I don't know how to explain. I was dizzy. I, I almost fell unconscious. But then after I was happy to win. I, I'm happy I pushed. I pushed myself to that limit. <laughs> Man, but that's when you kind of actually was ready to find out that you can do it, you know? Like, you had so many amazing coaches, man. And uh, Christoph uh, Midou is like, a, he's such a great guy. And then I know how tough he was on you. <laughs> yeah. He, he, I was very fortunate in my life to have many people. I believe the success in an athlete, it's of course, there's a genetic factor. You know, I'm, I'm not born in a, in a wheelchair. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good athlete. There's, you have to work hard, but there's also a factor of chance to be at the right time, at the right, right moment. And I was very fortunate to meet great people in my career. I had the chance to meet uh, uh, Christophe Midou. He took me underneath his wing. Firas, uh, uh, Braulio, you... Uh, Roger, John Denaher, uh, Bruno Fernandez, all my my all my manager, everything happened. The star were aligned. You know, I I I worked really hard. I made my chance, but I was lucky to meet those guys. All the, 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 those people that had an incredible influence on my career. Without of without of them, I I, I would never have had as much success as I had. So everybody had a had, had a role to play in my life. And I was very fortunate because of that. I, I, unfortunately, it's not everybody that had a chance to meet great mentors towards their career. Yes, you know, like, that's one of the biggest characteristics. And I think everyone who made it, uh, they have this kind of a sense of uh, really appreciation, you know, and, and, and uh, always uh, remember what they, that they didn't get there 
by ourselves, you know, and, uh, and, and it's very important to, like, for example, you always appreci was very appreciative of your coaches and, and, and of people that made you that. And today, nowadays, you kind of pass it on and give back. I remember how much you were always, you know, uh, open and very giving so many tips to myself as on my on my MMA um, kind of journey. And uh, it's very, very nice to see that, you know, you've always been appreciative for things that, uh, uh, for people around you. And, but it's not by luck, you know, I really believe that things happen for a reason. You know, we, likes attracts likes and then people are very appreciative as well of, of having you part of, of the team and being an amazing influence on also on the life outside of the Mets too, you know, and um, so, oh, George, um, you now on this lockdown and you dead in Montreal, uh, how are things you, with you on, on, on those madness? Well, I have a, I, the thing is, uh, I think um, I'm, I'm not lonely, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not by myself, you know, I have a beautiful, beautiful family, but the thing is, I'm, I'm lucky in that, that regard to not be locked in by myself alone. I'm, uh, I keep myself busy training. Uh, you know, you don't need to be in a gym to train. You can train, uh, you know, you can, can, uh, you don't need weight. You know, there, there's many ways, kinesthetic, you can use different gymnastic exercise that you can do to your level in your house. Uh, you just need to be a little bit creative. You know, I use pull up. I use a hockey stick in between two chairs to make a pull up bar and it works. You know, you can't do everything. It's just to stay in shape. You know, of course, now we can't go out as much because of that. So I, I, I try to eat a little bit cleaner. I did the fasting, intermittent fasting as well, and uh, train every day. Yeah, so it's hard. You know, I, sometimes I get bored, but uh, it's, uh, it's going to be hopefully in a few weeks, it will be over and uh, everybody will go back to their normal life. I think that is good. In a way, it makes us reconnect maybe with our family. And if you have a chance to say it, to someone that you love him, it's he's important in your life. Just miss, don't miss the chance because life is precious. You'd never know when it's gonna end. And also for the nature, it makes us human to realize that we're part of a, of the planet. We don't control the planet. The country, the planet can control us, and uh, we're all uh, we're all on the same boat here. Whether if we, there is like a superficial uh, uh, boundaries, superficial. Uh, barrier that separate us we're all on the same planet yeah george man like you know with all this you can we have been using this time you know to really time to reflect right that um you know that's when also the mentality of the martial arts can be very helpful you know to be comfortable on uncomfortable situations and, and with our team Gracie Barra, we we never been so connected even though we are separated we and we need each other to to, to train but we are still connected world globally and it, it's amazing to see that we are taking this opportunity to get even stronger bond with ourselves and for sure this one this madness goes we will be even more uh, and better connected than ever and another, another thing too that it's important to mention is even if you're limited i remember i got two acl uh, surgery I, I tear my acl and i wasn't in, in a wheelchair you know and, and not in a wheelchair but i was very limited you can do a visualization drill Vis the power of the brain man it's it's so important when i went when i i couldn't move for a few months i was doing my my training in here in your brain visualize close your eyes visualize your move your drill if you're a competitor and you don't want to lose the edge and remember, you're not going to lose the edge because everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's in quarantine now. So everybody has the same anti-cap. So when times goes back to normal, you won't lose anything. And if you have made your own work, you'll be ahead of time. So visualization is important. You know, as you said, you know, everyone's on the same boat and, and, and we all have to, if life gives you lemons, let's make lemonade right so we are limited everyone is limited and you've got to have that martial arts uh, mentality to be able to go through all that right also another say we also say in brazil is that if you don't have dogs you you hunt with cats so basically you do what you with what you got right and um so is is there any um other any anything that you like to 
give a tip for people who are stuck at home and if there's any exercise that you you, you recommend uh, another, another thing you can do i i can you know uh suggest your your student of doing and and that's a drill i used to do when i was broke and i didn't have the money and now i'm gonna i'm doing ba i'm going back to this i don't know if you're able to to get out of the of your house and take a walk in england i don't know if you if you're able to yeah in your queue you can have a we can go out once a day if if you maintain your distance so what I do, so what I do is this. So one of my training, because I we're, we're, we're not able to socialize here, we have to keep distance. So what I do is I put my jeans on and my coat on and I'm going for a jog. I start from my house and I'm jogging five minutes. I time five minutes. And once it's been five minutes that I jog, I turn around. Okay. And you know the electric poats, you know the electric, electric poats. So one post, I sprint, one post, I, I slowly jog. One post, I sprint, one post, and I'm going back towards my house. That's my training. It will last maybe seven, eight minutes maybe, and it's a hell of a training. So maybe it's if five minutes is easy, next day you do you do 12 minutes or, 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 or five minutes, I mean 10 minutes, then after 15 minutes. So you 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 jog the, the you did you measure the distance by jogging away from your house, whatever the the parkour the, the it's an area you choose, and then you come back on your own step, on your own same trajectory and one electric post the distance you sprint the other one you 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 jog one you sprint one you sprint and it's never the same length it's never the same length so it, it make your heart rate go up down up down it's it's a very good workout I used to do that. When I was training for a fight back in the day, when I didn't have money, when I was poor, now I'm, that's what I'm doing right now to stay in shape. Here you go, guys. This some good tips out there. If you can get out of your house, man, start counting the posts and uh, let's get it on. Brother uh, George, man, I have no words to say. Thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate that. You know, I had an amazing time. I know everyone who is watching is going to have also a good time and very, as well we get very inspired by, by your little bit of a story. Thank you very much, brother. Really appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. I hope everything goes well. And uh, I hope my uh, my English friend and UK, everybody in UK and Brazil, everybody goes well. All right. Take care of yourself, guys. All right, bro. Have a good time with your family and I'll see you next time on the other side of the screen. Cheers.